Hey Legionnaires and welcome back with some more NTW3 for you today and we have a glorious 3v3 battle for you today and in this one we have the guard here you can see the imperial guard are back in battle representing the French and the Emperor most importantly Napoleon himself and uh, yes I mean these uniforms are glorious aren't they with their uh, like young guard trilliers here look amazing really do and they are joined today by the Poles and by the Confederation of the Rhine. So we have like kind of like Napoleon's like best of his best and his subjects here that are supporting him. And they are facing today not one, not two, but three British armies really. But I mean kind of also a British slash Russia. We have the Helder Expedition here, which are currently gunning down some middle guard uh, lances as they uh, form square there. Um, that like light infantry unit. We then have the Peninsula Army here. The UK and we also have the 1815 like the Waterloo campaign uh, army over here as well which is actually kind of a long way from uh, well the battle itself really I mean Poland and like Confederation Rhine are a long long way away and uh, you can see that they're actually forming up so they're ready to hold here uh, and we've got some Highland foot the Gordons getting ready along with uh, some of the 40th regiment but yes we have not one but two uh, wellingtons here as well we have arthur wesley also wellington as he is by uh, 1815 then we have arthur wesley as he uh, was in the peninsula war so uh, yeah it gonna be an interesting one to see uh, how the french can deal with not one but two wellingtons they couldn't deal with one in in reality how will they deal with two we'll have to find out um, and then we also have frederick of york and albany from uh, the helder expedition he's not quite a wellington and uh, you're you're not as well known, sir. So that's unfortunate for you. Um, but as you can see, the most of the British army is still very much hidden. Only like the uh, 1815 forces are starting to appear. Over here, we have uh, some the uh, 95th Grasshoppers here. We have some King's German Legion foot. All sorts of stuff setting up here on this left hand side. And they look like they're going to be taking on the Confederation of the Rhine, who um, looks like he's swinging units out this way. Now I can see some line infantry going in this direction. But if, you enjoy, if you're enjoying seeing Napoleon Total War 3 at the moment on the channel, would like to see more of it, then do remember to keep, uh, keep up your support with likes, subscribes, and uh, and comments as well. And if you want to uh, make sure you never miss out on it, NTW3 Battle, make sure as well to uh, hit that notification bell as well. But yes, this was sent in by a member of my Discord. And uh, yeah, if you want to send in your own replays to then feature on the channel, um, then join my Discord if you haven't already. The link is down below in the description. And uh, send your replays to me there. As you can see, it looks like artillery is underway. I'm not quite sure whose artillery is firing. I think there's some uh, Polish artillery yeah, here. That's uh, opening up, I presume, on that Helder Expedition unit that's in square. But yes, the Helder Expedition, if you don't know, is kind of like a, uh, a weird hybrid of both, uh, of both Britain and of Russia. So we have some Russian Jaegers here. Commanded by a British general. It's a very interesting one. I'm, this is a pretty much a, it's a historical faction or like expedition. I think um, it's part of the uh, like the Revolutionary Wars. I'm not exactly sure myself on the history of this expedition, but it's quite a quite a cool um, like thing that happened basically. Russia and Britain teaming up together. So surely you'll get the both good like both sides. You like get the really elite and like. Um, Russian units that want to like fight to the death and then you have the British that like have got really good accuracy You'd hope anyway, but we'll see I can tell you one thing this uh, This line for unit here is under heavy fire And you can see that the uh, looks like the French Well not the French, but actually the Poles have taken this building here or they had I'm not quite sure what they I think they've since vacated it. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's oh no, there is men in here Might be the Grenadier unit. I'm not quite sure what's in here exactly Oh, it looks like an Alliance Infantry unit. For some reason their uh, emblem's not appearing above the uh, house, but that's fair enough. We'll just ignore that. But it looks like I'm going to say that the first bit of fighting that's going to happen is, pro apart from like a small cavalry skirmish that happened earlier, it's probably going to be 1815 um, Britain. I think he's going to try and take on the Confederation of the Rhine and probably also bits of Poland by the looks of Poland. looks like he's sending cavalry in this direction. Looks like the guards are going to be quite happy just to stand and look at the Helder expedition. And uh, I presume it's the Peninsula Army. And there's a, uh, a 15, uh, an 1815 gun in here for Britain. Got a, uh, a six pounder. I was about to say it's a 15 pounder. I don't think Britain, any, Britain certainly never had anything that big. I don't even think that such things are 15 pounder. But as you can see, oh, we've got some uh, Royal Sappers and Miners here waiting. 
Is there anything else in this wood? There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, they are. The poles were going to go for a charge and they decided no. Or maybe they have. They are going to go for this gun. There you go. Gun is going in. Going to get murdered. One last volley. I think they hit a few more poles. There you go. They are in. And that gun probably is going to break. Those sappers and miners certainly will not be able to withstand uh, that charge of cavalry. And you can see that the uh, British are now setting up some infantry. Got some uh, Ross Shire uh, buffs. There's some Kingsmen. Some more. These are more Scots. Uh, and they are in there. But that's, that's a little late. They've routed the gun. They don't care about clearing the sappers. They just want to get the, the gun. I'm surprised the British didn't send any cavalry in their own. But look at this. 1815. Uh, Britain is really overstretched, in my opinion. He's got, like, a long, long line. Um, let's just stretch along this road from, like, over here all the way to this um, this this forest where you've just seen the engagement. And a little bit on beyond that. Um, this is all his men as well. So I think he's brought a very infantry-heavy army. And uh, he's got the Cameron Highlanders as well. He's got all sorts of Indian skilling. Well, the Black Watch. He's brought a lot of Highland units. The poles are still in there. What are they charging now? Don't know. But they're uh, very slow, obviously, in the woods. And they're getting now focused down. They probably are not getting out of there. Oh, they're going for this other gun. For sure. Yeah. Tired. Yeah, these guys are going to be gunned down. How are they not rout already routing? I do not know. But look at this. The British is having target practice. They're out of the woods now. So they look at that. They're so much quicker now they're out of the woods. They might route. Um, before they uh, route the gun, to be honest, with the volleys going off. No, nope, probably not, actually. I take it back. The Poles are going to win that. They've destroyed that gun, and now they're going to get out of there. And Britain's now without guns, and he's going to try and go for uh, Wesley, uh, Wellington himself. And uh, the 1815 general has realized this, and he's uh, not having any of it. But he is also starting the assault over here. I'll just mention that there is a bit of a uh, firefight now going on between the uh, Jaegers of the uh, Confederation right, and also the 95th Rifles here. Having a bit of a skirmish off. But it looks like... I'm just keeping an eye on this. I just want to see if they do get the general. But I don't think they're going to. You can see uh, Britain is setting up squares. I think they're going to try and put uh, Wellington inside one of these squares, perhaps. There you go. That's sorted. Uh, the crew has actually survived for this um, artillery. So they're going to be able to get back on these guns. So uh, the Poles not quite completed their mission of destroying... That artillery piece, but they'll probably keep this uh, cavalry unit just spare for that exact purpose. They're actually got more cavalry. Have the um, look at this converged Rhine. He's got Chasseur Cheval all the way around the back, and he could go for um, the Peninsula Wars uh, Wellington if he wanted to. We'll have to see. And uh, it looks like he's got some uh, Carassias over here as well. I mean, they could definitely go for this. I don't know why they haven't bothered to charge this. I don't know where the cavalry is for uh, 1815 Britain if he's brought any. Um, to be honest, I've not seen any. I know that the Helder uh, expedition has certainly got some, but it was early. Some of it was routed quite early. So I personally think that the French and their allies have the cavalry advantage, as they should, to be honest. Poland has a lot of cavalry, um, or should always bring a lot of cavalry. They are a cavalry heavy faction. But uh, as you can see, it looks like Wellington has survived a close shave there. And now he's waiting to see what the French will do next. The French and their allies, anyway. You see, the French are doing very little. It's all uh, the Poles and the uh, Federation of the Rhine right now. He's moving up some uh, cavalry. Or he's just running it across, trying to just see what they have. Maybe just highlight some targets for the uh, French gun or the Polish guns to fire on. Got some uh, British infantry here, part of the Helder expedition. This is what I mean. You can have a mix of like a Russian and a British army. It's quite, quite cool, to be fair. Not only the uh, French can have the multinational armies, the British can as well if they want to. Well, the British do already anyway. They have Germans in their uh, in their armies. They have the King's German Legion and stuff like that. As you can see here, perfect example. Oh, they do have some cavalry. What do they have? Some light dragoons here, cherry pickers. Surely they have more than just light dragoons. They're not going to stop that big Karassi unit that's all the way back there. 109 men. Not stopping anything. Uh, you can see all this cavalry here as well. It's not going to stop all that. I honestly think if the um, Confederation of the Rhine just pushes up his Our army, running, all they need is a... Con oh, we have cavalry running. We have cavalry running. Oh, gosh. Oh, the guard went in. They, what did they go in for? This Russian light infantry probably was not worth it. 14 of them get left. They're getting chased off by um, the 
cavalry of the uh, Helder Republic. But yeah, as you can see, this entire force has now been revealed. The Helder Republic uh, and the Peninsula Army are just going to kind of stay around these two villages here and keep them on either flank. And uh, yeah, that's their position that they're going to hold, it looks like. And the French have lost uh, some young guard lances. But yeah, what I was saying earlier is that with the uh, 1815 army so stretched out, if the Confederates on the Rhine just punches through like somewhere with infantry and cavalry, then they can just destroy the British like piece by piece. Um, honestly, I think like this three units of cavalry could probably take these three units of infantry. And like after that, I don't know, think there's anything in behind. As you saw when the um, like the tiny pole cavalry unit, which is over there now, has been running in behind. There was nothing he was highlighting here. So I honestly think that like the British are really stretched out on a really long thin line. Which, th I mean, this army comp definitely suggests to me a newer player. Um, because most players, when they're playing NTW3, bring a fair amount of cavalry. Um, I could say the same for this British army as well. I'm not really sure how much cavalry it's got. Not really seen any. At least they're firing on the Polish cavalry. They know that that's a threat, at least. Hussars here. Poniatowski. 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 We'll just call him Joseph. Big Joe. Uh, so many in combat here. What's being fired upon? Oh, so they actually did go for like... I don't know. They just pushed forward to the cavalry and they then got shot at like, uh, the 95th. That's not a bad move there by the British. Just keeping the cavalry at bay. Here we go. Some Jaegers now firing onto the uh, King's German Legion. Need to keep their distance. Oh, but the cherry pickers are coming forward. Here we go. So the British are going to take the offensive. Well, they were. And then they've changed their mind. Change their mind as soon as they saw these Karasias move straight back up. So I'm going to fast forward it ever so slightly because, uh, well, there's very little going on at the moment. But as I say that the French is starting to move forward, the guard is coming forward. And I'm pretty sure this guard could probably deal with the Helder Republic and probably a considerable amount of the uh, eight of the Peninsula Army as well. Um, it looks like 1815 is going to be hold up here dealing with the Poles and the Confederation of the Rhine. Well, the Poles are going to be everywhere by the looks of it. Their cavalry is just scattered across the map, which is good to see. What have they got back there? They've actually got a young guard, uh, Voltaire, in a house. I wouldn't have bothered with that. I think they're going to need every guard unit on the front line. And here we go. Looks like the British are coming forward now with their Highland foot and various other things. The Royal Welch Fusiliers. We've got all sorts of stuff coming forward here. King's German Legion. And they're going to be met with some Polish infantry. Looks like they're going to try and just go through this village, maybe. Try and get a flank on the British. Not a bad idea. Again, I feel like the Confederation Ryan, if he swings in now onto this left flank of this push here, he puts Britain in a really tough position. Britain is uh, shifting across to deal with the threat. And here we go. The first musket fight is about to take place. The Poles, I mean, their Polish infantry is much inferior to this. Uh, like, infantry of Britain. I feel like Britain needs to uh, form a bit more of a column, like his line formation. I mean, they're all well and good, but you get more morale if you form column. I say that, but I mean, like, the Poles are getting wrecked. So I guess maybe Sir, it might not matter. It may not matter with the quality of infantry they're facing here. But certainly Poland here wants to be, like, making moves now with his infantry. Certainly wanting to try and take up this small force. It's just, like... It's a small British force, but it's four units. Of, if you get four regiments off the field, I mean, that's, that's a considerable win. There we go. The British firing away. And off they go into the uh, into the fog a bit. They their own created fog. They need to be careful here, though. I don't know if these guys can form square exactly. Uh, I think they can. And they are going to be. Um, they're going to be flanked at the moment. Yeah, these guys can form square because they have a little square icon next to them. So yeah, here you go. I feel form square now. Yeah, he, sa he saves himself there. Yeah, all of these units here can form square. I think most of the British units can. Lucky, lucky boys. A general's been killed. Ho Chi Minh's general got killed. Oh, he got shot? So there you go, the Confederation, the Rhine's general has been shot, uh, I presume by British artillery, been sniped out. Uh, 
well played, I guess, by Britain. I mean, that you're very much allowed to just general snipe in um, an NTW3 is a risky. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't risky at all. There's no guns, like, nothing in threat. I guess risky by the uh, uh, conversion of Ryan just leaving his general out in the open. But there you go, you can see they finished off that artillery once and for all with the Ullens here. They finally dealt with that. And it looks like uh, the French here are now pushing forward. Don't know why Hell the Republic just got one unit of Jaegers here. He needs to get that supported. So get annihilated here by the guard. If it fires. I love their flag though. Look at that banner. Oh, it's beautiful. Who wouldn't want to follow that banner? They're going to carry on coming before these Jaegers surely can start to fire soon. Maybe not. Maybe these. Surely, the, yeah, I was going to say the guard will now destroy this poor unit. You're going to fire back? Here we go. <laughs> Lovely. I mean, the outgun, that's the only issue. Look, look at this line. I just keep pushing this French line forward. Just overwhelm the hell of the Republic here. I mean, is there any need to really stop for this unit? You could just keep pushing forward, pushing forward, and bayonet charge it. The Poles here, though, look at this. Flanking the British position. Uh, the British have got stuff in the, in the forest, but they need to be careful. And now you can see the Confederation Ryan is pushing forward. He's been angered with his general being killed. And he's now ready for the uh, the advance. He needs to get this unit out of square. I mean, he's going to just get evaporated to standing in square as it is now. Line of retreat. Harassing it as it runs away. We've got cavalry now coming in. We've got some of those Polish cavalry harassing the British as they run. This is the King's German Legion. The King's own special Germans. They're getting routed. Third foot there. What we've got here. The Gordons. This is an elite unit as well. Well, at least at least it is at um, Waterloo. What is coming forward here? Look at this. Hell Republic again. Only sending forward like tiny small sections. He might as well just engage in the entire line. Like his best chance of taking out the guard is going to be with the Peninsula Army and his own army. They're intermixing their armies. I don't know how great an idea that is. I always find that's a bit risky because obviously if something like breaks and you've not got anything in the area and you're relying on your ally to like... Uh, reinforce. It's not always the most reliable of uh, of strategies, put it like that. Sometimes your allies too busy elsewhere. It just makes your micro a bit harder when you uh, mix your armies together. You can see the Poles are taking this village without any real sort of fight. They've like, I mean, they've routed quite a few British units. These Royal Welsh Fusiliers, and I think they did get the Gordons. I think. No, they didn't. They didn't quite get them. German Le even the King's German Legion survived. So they actually routed one unit. But yeah, you can see Britain really needs to get these units back. He is also being forced towards um, like the red line over here. Instead of like being able to go back towards his uh, front main line, which is kind of forming up around that, that forest. You can see that this uh, Ullen here is kind of standing in between. He should really just charge these units here. I mean, they can all form a square, but he must be busy microing elsewhere, you'd thought. But, well, let's keep an eye on the guard anyway. The guard's where we want to be... Uh, watching the, with their glorious uniforms as you can see they're now dueling with the entire line they've dealt with the first few reactionary forces from the Helder Republic and it's now onto the main stuff the real stuff there you go some beautiful volleys going off you can see the Helder Republic here and the Peninsula Army uh, getting stuck in mainly actually the Helder Republic also the Peninsula's kind of stood back a bit that can't like I said that cannot happen they need to uh, support each other and they are putting some nice rounds into that uh, into that guard unit there with their artillery. There you go, the British responding. And then retreating. So yeah, I feel like they're just moving back into the lines of the um, of the Peninsula Army. They're getting shot as they retreat. Though. This line battle is still taking place though. Uh, it seems like, it, yeah, there is actually a mix of Russian and uh, British units here. Good to see, look at that. It's so weird. Imagine that, like the language barrier going on right now. Like the English can barely speak English, and then they're trying to also talk to the Russians, who probably have no idea what they're saying, and like whatever strong regional accents they have. But here we go. We got cavalry coming forward. It's the, those uh, middle guard red like lancers. They're now engaged. They're actually going up to these uh, these uh, like Kazakh units. This is a light cavalry unit here. I guess I feel like the guard's going to win that, and then just go straight with the gun. 
And there's nothing these guys can do there. We have the Cameron Highlanders here again. Look at that, the 79. And yeah, he's just going to go in for the gun. The gun crew's actually charged forward. And uh, yeah, I feel like the, uh, the Lance is going to win that. Why the Cameron Highlanders hasn't fired? If you get such a nice volley into the side of these guys. And they're actually going to go for the general. Look at this. Frederick of York is going to get uh, assassinated by this middle guy. He's just going straight through the center of the army here. And there you go. Cameron Highlanders finally fires a bit late. They had a perfect shot when they were so close. I think. I don't know. Like, maybe they're going to go for the other gun. There you go. That's what they're going to go for. This gun here. We're out this one. This is another British uh, artillery from the Helder Expedition. You see the British forming square as well. They don't care about the, your infantry. They just care about the gun. But the gun's actually getting out of there. The guards just, just gun it down as it moves forward. Uh, we'll check on the other side. The Poles now engaged heavily with the British in here. And they actually are sending cavalry as well. Sending a law carry. And they are chain routing units along this line right now. I mean, these guys just have not formed square in time. Looks like the, uh, the foot have hit at night first. Foot have looks at like the... Uh, Ross Shire after it. all these Highlanders will we've got the Sappers as well, all sorts in here. Everything's forming square. They're that scared. Like these guys down the line here. You don't need to form square. Just form square on the one on the outside and then see if they go on beyond that. Uh, like I said, Brayden kind of getting isolated out here. He's not being able to get back to his uh, his front line. Looks like uh, he's getting overwhelmed at the moment by the Confederation of the Rhine. He's barely contribute like not, not in a harsh way, but like barely contributed. You could say like these couple of units here have like moved forward. He's still bringing up his reserves, really. Um, he's trying to support the Poles here. Yeah, it seems to be going a bit poorly there for 1815 Britain. Looks like the uh, guard here though has been forced back. As you can see the Helder Expedition over here and the Peninsular Army now move mobilizing. Forcing this right flank a little bit. Quite a few guard bodies here, though. These men trying to get into the old guard, fighting in the middle and the young. Oh, we've got the, uh, like the Grenadiers, uh, Cheval on horseback here. They're going in, they're going after the Held Republic infantry. This is just a really nasty unit. 125 men, Grenadiers is on a horse. The scariest sight you'll ever see on an Imperial battle. And they are routing these Russian infantry for the Held Republic, or uh, Held Expedition, not Helder Republic. I've probably been saying that all game. Helder Expedition. They are trying to route this uh, square. They should just get out of there. These guys, just, there's no need to. It's done exceptionally well. They have such fresh numbers left. Yeah, there's just such a lack of cavalry for the uh, British and their allies. They brought like such a little. Uh, Helder Expedition brought all their, like, some light cav, and that was it. I don't know if they really have any other option. But the British need to bring some like dragoons, some heavy dragoons, maybe some uh, some light dragoons. Well, they brought some light dragoons, but very low. Some hussars, whatever. They just need to bring it. Cameron Highland holding the line here. If anyone's going to hold though, it's going to be the Highlanders. These German Legion light here as well. The peninsula with the green rascals setting up. It looks like uh, the guards just dealt with most of the uh, held expedition on this side. We actually have a uh, held expedition flank going on here, like I mentioned. They form square. They've denied that charge from the poles. The poles are cleaning house in this 1815 army over here. Just being pushed out of the forest. First they're in the village. Now they're in the forest. And now they're soon to be out of the forest. Getting flanked by the poles. The Polish infantry is not that great. It really isn't. Um... Britain's making it look a lot better than it really is. Our men are running, sir. Like, he needs to turn this unit to help uh, support his, uh, his other unit. So these guys are getting uh, gunned down at the moment, these poor guys. Over here, the north flank is almost, like, gone. I don't know why these crises haven't gone in for the kill. They really should. The fighting battalion. It's like, things are in the fifth foot. Oh dear, look at this. This is the new type of square. It's form a big blob and just see what happens. I feel like, yeah, they're turning to face the grasses. Best way to turn to face the grasses, just form square. If you're that worried, just form square. Like that. There you go, form square. I mean, now you, the only issue is that you are going to get gunned down by infantry. These uh, Jaegers here doing all oh, this light infantry here. They've actually just broken. You can say, 
They're doing quite well with little ammo, uh, with little morale as well, I've got to say. The line infantry here putting volley after volley into these British. They're just having a rough time. He needs to really face the line infantry instead of like looking at the lights. Because the light's not the issue. They're just going to harass you. This line infantry is going to do the, the heavy work. And you can see he broke as he charged, tried to charge. And the, uh, this square here is just in, an I in a bit of an issue. Comes out of square, he gets charged by the cav. Stays in square, he gets a slow death from the muskets. And here we go, the poles pushing forward here. So yeah, I mean, this is certainly a good battle to like to, for like a learning curve for newer players, like on like learning curves and stuff like that. Certainly, like the big mistake I've seen is like the importance of cav. Like you need to bring cav because a it gives your army mobility in like NCW3 with everything moving so like slowly. You need uh, like mobility and cavalry to basically just keep, run across your lines, be able to help in any way possible. I don't know what this unit here is doing as well. It's like. Definitely probably causing some friendly fire. If you just formed a straight line, it'd be perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, certain that I certain that and also I feel like um, like Britain certainly could have been a bit a lot more aggressive. I feel like just a bit more knowledge in like uh, in factions also helps. Britain certainly could have been aggressive on some of the pearl, on the poles. And also his all he should have, 1815 should have just not and should not stretch himself out so thin, especially when he had no cavalry. Don't stretch himself out so thin. He should also come back down this road and join up with his allies here around this village because uh, well these two um, these two armies here are doing a lot better against the guard. I mean the guard's been forced back as you can see. Yeah, as I was saying, the uh, the French army uh, over here has been forced back um, because these two sides have stayed together. If the 1815 army like had rejoined up with his allies, he would have been perfectly safe. Because what's happened, it's kind of like a mirror image on either side of the battle. So like you've had one army here with a, like a few assets helping, uh, in fairness for the pole, like from the poles. Well, one army attacking two, and the ones kind of losing. It's not losing like the guards have been forced back. Uh, it's a few setbacks. But over on this side, it's been the opposite, and the French were there. Uh, like the French allies here have been facing one British army and are going to win because they're, just, they're able to outgun the enemy as got the Camerons coming in here they're just going to get gunned down as they go in yeah they're just about going to get in combat but they're probably about to break and there you go they break I think there's like one more unit coming in yeah more Highlanders from the Black Watch I think that's Britain just Throwing in the towel, really. I think he's realised he's out, and he's, just... he's like, "I've got better things to be doing." I mean, he's... look at this. The sap is like dead up close. They're not even engaged. Just gonna stand there. They've actually routed those poles. I'll give them that. There's a lot more in that forest, and yeah, that's basically like that's definitely some advice I'd definitely give. Learn when you've like it's up, you're up against it. Like this British player here did not see the warning signs that he was. All on his own and outgunned and out had no cavalry to face a like a much superior cavalry force. And you can see now that they are uh, kind of new boxing around this uh, around this village here. Their guns up from shooting out like some lone cavalry. Looks like they're just gonna like Britain's just gonna have to wait a lot for him. France is gonna have to wait on. Um, on his allies to arrive. This young guard unit looks like a good chunk of his unit here. Morale taking an absolute beating. You see, he's actually going to fall back. He's going to keep falling back. But I mean, you can see here, look at this. The uh, blooming Grenadier Cheval in behind. They're causing all sorts of issues to this. Uh, 17th foot, the Tigers here, causing more issues. And now they're going to be able to rear charge all of these guys if they wanted to. I mean, yeah, they can't. None of these can really form square. That one can. None of the Russians can, really. Actually, some of the British can't either. Most of this battle, though, most of the units can form square, I've seen. 
Looks like the Helder Expedition sending out its last cavalry. I mean, this is a bit risky. I'd probably want to keep this as defensive as possible because there's no way this beats these Imperial uh, Grenadiers. That's just murder. So what murder is what we're about to witness here. Yeah, look at that. Broke instantly. Just not a good idea to send in. They could just go after the general. They could go after Wellington if they wanted to. You see the Poland starting to arrive over here with infantry. What are they firing on? They've got the artillery up here as well. They're actually swinging up artillery, bringing it closer. Not a bad idea, I guess. But honestly, you could just, with your infantry, just assault this way. And then keep, like, cavalry behind. I mean, this is going to be an easy defense, I would thought, to clean up. These British units are, like, look, well, A, they're looking the wrong way. They're looking at, like, there's no threat over here. It's, like, one or two cavalry. That's why you have square. The threat is in front of them. Well, technically behind them. There you go. He's going to turn now. This square does need, not need to be in square either. There's no cavalry threatening it. We have killed their general. And a general has been now killed. That is, uh, I think that's Wellington dead. I think Wellington has been, uh, or Wesley, Arthur Wesley, it's the uh, Peninsula version. It's been well and truly executed. Uh, looks like Frederick of York got out of his uh, battle alive. Oh no, we. Oh, so is that. Uh, I think that's 1815. That was actually 1815. I think uh, this is. That's Peninsula one there. He's actually taken a bit of fire as well from artillery. And there's a bit of an artillery duel going on right now, King's German Legion. Dueling with the Polish artillery. But as you can see, uh, this is like the quality and the numbers. Like, Peninsula War is probably the best version of Britain. And they're able to match this uh, guard army at the moment with the help of the uh, Helder Expedition. I don't know. They might be able to win that, the guards. They've just been a bit... They've been cautious. They kept their army intact. It's a very healthy guard army still. Plenty of uh, healthy units of infantry here. I can see a cavalry coming forward. The Poles are going to just try and go for this uh, Russian unit here, I think. Is it going to form a square? Because it can. No. He's going to fire some volleys as they run past. They're not going after that at all. They're going after the gun. They're going to go after this horse artillery here. A bold play. I don't know why they... <laughs> How did this survive? And they actually have also gone in for the infantry and they broke. The poles broke. And so did the gun. Okay. Oh, well, that'll break them permanently, I would have thought. A volley as they run off. That Polish unit, I don't think, is returning anytime soon. But again, I'm going to just put a little bit of a fast forward in it. It looks like we're just kind of waiting on the uh, Poles and the Confederation of the Rhine to arrive before the uh, the French and their allies are, want to throw in, like... Well, not throw in uh, the towels, what I was going to say, but, like, give the hammer blow. That's probably a better term. Got some grenadiers here. I didn't realize that the, the Poles brought some. These guys are pretty good, actually. Well, I don't know. 75 men in a unit. I feel like you want a bigger grenadier unit. I've been told that the Polish Grenadiers aren't great. And they look like old guard. They look like old guard. So to me, you can't go wrong there. But apparently you can. Apparently you can. See the Poles bring the cavalry forward. The British do have a bit of cavalry here. This is like the Peninsula Cavalry. They did bring some light dragoons. Why didn't they bring anything a bit heavier? There's no need to have all this infantry. You can see they're actually swinging a lot of infantry around. Uh, this way of the Helder Expedition. Like they're just ignoring that the Poles have just got stuff here. Like, they're openly leaving their flank open. They're just going to just go in. They want to take on this Polish army here. They've actually routed the general for Poland. Good for them. At least I believe he's the general. Doubt there's any other 16-man units knocking about for Poland. I love the Polish helmets though, I mean, or like Shakos, I should really call them. They look awesome, very unique. These guys anyway, they're just like chipping away at the uh, Peninsula War Army. Oh, that's a nice volley though. Even though we're losing the fighting battalion of the King's German Legion, they'll fight on. I think we had this uh, fighting battalion unit. I think it was over there in the 1815. I mean, the King's German Legion did fight just about everywhere. 
Here we go. Oh, I did not see this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at this. The King's German Legion. Oh, King's German Legion. The Grenadiers uh, of Cheval have just basically just routed the entire center of this uh, Helder expedition going on here. And the Peninsula are actually there here as well. They're volunteers. The guards now coming forward, going to take up this gap. I mean, this is what I mean. They just, like, the Helder expedition sent a load of infantry out here. And which is all well and good. You are trying to flank the Poles. And you're probably going to, yeah, eventually over overcome this these two units. But you just allowed the guard to come in. You had a pretty strong position here. The guard was held back. I think they were doomed anyway because they lost an entire army out there, isolated. And then now it's a 3v2. Probably more like a 3v2 and a half. No, a 3v one and a half. That's what I meant. But look at this. This small like outcrop of uh, Brits now is going to get attacked from every side by Poles and Germans. I couldn't think of a worse combination to be attacked by. Actually, maybe the Italians. If the Italians are there, you'd never hear the end of it. I mean, yeah, the Peninsula Army could win this fight here quite easily. They could win this. Poles just infantry is not great. And I mean, Verich and Ryan's taking his time to get to the front. He's got, he's got guard to core back here as well. These guys are like, they've got a lot of like good cavalry that they've just not used. The Karassi is like all the way back there. They're barely touched. But as you can see, yeah, the guards destroyed this entire side with infantry and cavalry. This uh, Grenadier Cheval still got 50 men in it. It's probably more cavalry than that unit there. It's more than probably the British having all their cavalry units combined. You can see the Held Republic is running to this village here. They're going to try and defend this village, and that is it. I get Arthur Wesley inside this little house now and get him nice and comfy because he's about to be executed. Get Frederick of York in there while, while you're at it as well. Poor Fred's probably absolutely browning his pants. Well, Sharp and the 95th did some miracles in the Sharp series, but I don't think they're going to pull off anything here. Are they honestly trying to just snipe out a... Well, this one looked like he's going to try and snipe out the, uh, the... Actually, I think this one is as well. This one's trying to snipe out the guns of the Poles. I don't think that's going to be a, a good idea. Just harass these poor Polish infantry. Poles need to pull back their uh, cavalry. They're just letting you get shot. Glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Yep, certainly is. Now that is a perfect time for the uh, the man to say. He often says it like within the first five minutes when nothing's happened. And here, cavalry charging in though. Never a good sign. Look at this. Poles going in. As I said, they can form square, but it doesn't... I don't know what they're going for. Oh, well, I guess go for that tiny little unit over there. Could go in, just go for uh, Wellington. Uh, Wellington, yeah, if they wanted to. Or Wesley. They're going to sit in their cab. I don't know why. I guess, yeah, try and save Wellington. I think he's in trouble, though. Look at him. In there with his little brown, uh, blue coat. Don't die now. Uh, is it danger of being just friendly fire, to be honest, the uh, infantry here? causing all sorts of issues. I think the poles broke though. Yeah, I think he's more likely of dying from friendly fire right now than from the unit in in that building than he is from the poles. But here come the guard. The guard will probably be the, the sucker punch that breaks through here. These guys need to get out of square. There's something as well that I feel like as a newer player, this micro is just not that great. Like these guys should be out of square already and they should be reforming like on the uh, right flank of the Helder expedition help face the guard. There's no more cavalry threatening them. There's some over there. As the Grandish... Oh, God. What are they beating up now? King's German Legion. And the uh, volunteers have returned. Yeah, as you can see, this is a... A defense of this village now. I mean, Britain is hanging on in there. Really is. I mean, he's making, making this battle drag out a little bit. I mean, honestly... I don't know why Poland and the Confederation right have not just gone in, just smashed through the lines. I feel like they could. They haven't got enough infantry the whole the entire like 
line that they're holding now, Bryn. They keep pushing out. Which seems a bit weird. Because they have no more men. Like, look at this. This is like... This is what you typically see in NTW3. Just a long line of, like, infantry. Like this. The guards is able to just overwhelm the, H uh, the HRE. Why are the, why are the HRE now be here? They, I mean, the British could do with them. Uh, even if they are terrible in infantry. But Helder, Helder Expedition, they're like... Not been setting up in long lines. They wanted to be like in little different, like almost like cores of their own doing their thing. You can see that actually, how the Poles got an infantry unit snuck in here, I have no idea. I guess just came down the road. And they're going to take out this gun. This six pounders are about to go. But it might, they might be able to take this Polish infantry with it. Yeah, well, it looks like they, yeah, they, oh no, they're chasing it down. Oh, the Poles broke. There he goes. The gun's been saved. I don't know why the guard doesn't charge in. The guard could honestly just do that and it would end the day. End it. End this flank. They're playing. Playing with their food almost. But yeah, old guard chasseurs here. Here we go. Here's, here's what. This is going to be the hammer blow. The Karassi is coming in. They are trying to form square. They actually did. Like the only time they didn't. They weren't in their square formation, these uh, peninsula units. And they've actually. Like being charged by cavalry. Got the Hindustan here. Look at that. 76 Hindustan. The old immortals. Then the saucy greens. What a name. Brennan's still holding somehow. He actually is beating some of these Confederates and the Rhine units. See, this is what I mean. The Brains has got a pretty good, like, available force. If we just put more cavalry, he had a chance. This Peninsula Light Dragoon's actually doing quite a bit of damage to this, uh, Lion Patrol, so it was. Every time the volley comes in, their morale just go down. They're honestly just going to let that harass them. Now they're going to form square, aren't they? Or they're going to try and... I think, everything, yeah, I think everything the British have left can form square. Which is very annoying for the uh, cavalry superior armies of the French, I'm sure. You can see that they're still forming square, and this is what's going to be their downfall. They're just getting gunned down by the French here. Just wait for a volley to come in. Just watch the, like, the numbers drop. The next one surely must be soon. They're breaking. Breaking before I even get a, like, have check it out for science, but look at that unit. That unit is being wrecked as well. Carry is now going in now. After the Royal... What is this? A Royal Military Artificers. I presume it's like a sapper unit as well. The men of the must but I certainly know that they won't survive this uh, Grenadier Cheval unit. Put it like that. They will not survive that. And you can see this entire flank has now been broken. The guard has finally just decided that it's time to finish them off. And they're going to be able to go in. The bridge on the other side still. They just need to go and kill flipping Wesley. And Fred. Kill Fred as well. Storm the building. There's nothing in here that can stop them. See the Confederation right now flanking hard on the Peninsula Army here. And that's gonna be surely to be curtains. I mean I'm just I'm just fast forwarding a little bit just because it's it's over. What's actually fighting in here? We have killed their general. Oh, Gemstein. I think that is. I think that is Wesley dead, which is good because he had the uh, largest army left. Fred's army's all but gone. Poor Fred. In go the guard. Middle guard going in. See the poles going in next by the looks of it. Finally, this guard unit for the uh, Grenadier Cheval is going to die though. This unit usually gets like focused down. Karassi's here helping to rattle all stuff. I mean, the British, I think, have accepted their fate. A lot of these units, though, are so intact. Like, look at this, 127 men left. And they're just going to get annihilated. The Peninsula Army did not come through enough, I feel. They let the Hell Republic first be damaged, and that's the other general dead. That's uh, Fred's died. Poor guy. He had a he had a rough time facing the uh, guard on his own for a bit. Then the Peninsula Army decided to get involved. They just seem to be quite happy to defend their village, and they realize. By that point, they realized 1815 was dead. The Hell Republic was all but routed. They were all that was left. And they were facing three armies. 
And that's why you have to help your allies. And I think there's just like Fred in the building. There's a few routing units over here that have gone. I think there's actually. The of I think that might be it. Oh, the, what's over here? The grass offers. Oh, there you go. It's down to the 95th rifles to win the day. I don't think they're going to do it. I think this will be a French victory. But actually, what's out here? I've got some Helder. There is some Russians. They, they're running for the hills. They are running home. Actually, no, they're not. They're running to their deaths. I'm glad that you sound cheery about it, but it's not going to end well. They could try and get Morte, I guess. That'll be a joke. Just kill the French general, leader of the guard, before while Labour as a, a last defiant act. Are they just going to retreat? Are they going to surrender? Nope. No, they're going to come forward. Okay. And the guard just can turn its entire army around and just go towards this one unit. This poor one unit. Just fast forward. I d don't have time to just wait around to just see one unit get gunned down. Oh, it's just like, there's other units returning. This is the only issue with NCW3. Everything at least returns once or twice, especially infantry. And there's all scatters all over the place. You can see it's happening already. You can see some Cumberland foot and some other stuff returning. But I mean, they've got cavalry. They can run it down. It shouldn't take too long. I kind of want to watch these Russians get absolutely obliterated. Yes, sir. Are the guard gonna fire? They should get a. They might get a volley off. Yeah, they're gonna get a volley off. And they break on impact. As it. Oh, Jesus. That unit's getting evaporated as it runs away. Just cannot. Oh my god. Rip in peace for that Russian unit. Yeah, that's fully shattered. That's not returning. Good to see that. Oh my gosh. Uh, and now there is just... Well, apparently that unit re might return. What is this unit here? Well, that's the unit I'm looking at. Yeah, North Lincolnshire. And then it's the, uh, the Cumberland there. Just turn turn one of your infantry. Just rail this unit, please. No one has time to wait around. I'm just fast forward. Route them. The yellow bellies, they'll go. The Poles, they've done, they've done, Poles have done quite well with their infantry. I'm surprised. They didn't bring anything, like, too fancy for the Poles. They brought, but they brought some okay stuff. What have we got here? Oh, please don't. Let's just set up, yeah. Just shoot them with the Jaegers. They'll die. I bet they'll break trying to kill the Jaegers. Oh, the artillery's going to get set up. An eight-pounder is going to be set up to destroy one unit. Please. Finish them off quicker than that. Oh, I can hear cavalry coming in. Oh, these are, no, they're just, they're just running. And they, you're, you're not even near anyone and you're running and you're shouting. It's not a very heroic charge. I'd be embarrassed. Oh, they're going to charge this gun. This gun actually might take the setup in time. Oh, it is. It's going to canister it. Oh, it got shot anyway. It's getting, yeah. There you go. It breaks, finally. Everything's gone, I think, now for the British. And that is, that is the battle. At least I think it is. Yeah, there we go. A victory for the French and their allies. So, yeah, this was sent in by uh, Johnny Le Buffon here, who was playing as the French, uh, like, guard. Had actually a fairly sizable army. 1,800, uh, like, men is quite a large army for the guard. I mean, didn't have to bring much cavalry, in fairness, in this game. Um, he actually nearly killed as many as he uh, deployed, which is really good for him. Ho Chi Minh here, nearly getting a 1,000 kills with uh, the largest army for the, uh, for the French, like, forces. Uh, lost his general, but barely lost any men. He barely actually, like, contribute to the battle. Uh, and then we have uh, B-dubs here playing as the Poles, um, getting over just over a 1,000 kills himself. So well done to all of them. Yeah, and then, um, unfortunately, yeah, like, uh, condolences, I guess, like, for, like, uh, G Nash for Opium Fields and for Meme Camp here, who are all playing as the British. Uh, I feel like they were all definitely younger, uh, well, newer players. Um, like, I feel like they just got overwhelmed and like the lack of cav was just a, the first sign of their doom um but there are the kills of oh, 547 kills for this grenadier cheval insane uh, really really well done and then you've got like the middle guard uh, middle guard here doing really well various other things doing very nicely so there you go they there are all the kills if you want to have a look at them but this that is where we're going to wrap up today's battle hope you guys enjoyed if you did do remember to leave a like subscribe if you're new around here and a comment to show your support and until next time legionnaires I will see you in the next one.